Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Corsair Xenon 32 UHD 144. If at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's jump in into it. Now right off the bat, this is a 32 inch screen size with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 or 4K. Now this brings the PPI or pixels per inch, essentially how crisp and clear the image is actually going to appear to your eye. Well, it's basically perfect here at about 138 pixels per inch. That's not too much and not too little. In a 27 inch screen size with 4K, you're basically rendering more pixels than you actually need this one is perfect. That means even very small text is going to appear very clear with no visible pixelation. Games, images, movies are going to be crystal clear. Now for the panel type, this is an IPS or in-plane switching panel. This means great colors, viewing angles, and with a modern monitor like this, great gaming performance. Now, not only that, but this also has a quantum dot layer in there, which is just going to increase that color gamut which is great. All right, but now let's move on to refresh rate and variable refresh rate. This hits 144 Hertz natively and has FreeSync Premium. Now you heard that correctly. This has FreeSync Premium, not FreeSync Premium Pro. Now, obviously this is also compatible with G-Sync, works well with that. So if you have an NVIDIA card like I do, um, then it's gonna work well with that. But the big deal with not having FreeSync Premium Pro over just FreeSync Premium is that FreeSync Premium Pro allows you to have variable refresh rate on with HDR. So if you do wanna game in HDR on this monitor, you will not be able to have FreeSync or G-Sync on. Now, this is actually not too big of a deal, but when compared to the competition, they have this. And most of them have this even at much lower price points now. All right, but let's move on to brightness and HDR because we're gonna talk a little bit more about the HDR here. All right, firstly, this is rated for 400 nits in SDR and 600 nits in HDR. Now, as I expected, this actually outperforms the rating in SDR, hitting about 520 nits, which is fantastic. This is great. This is very vibrant, beautiful, and bright. If you have a bright room uh, with a lot of windows or a lot of cam lights or whatever in there, you're going to be okay. Pair that with the matte finish, which keeps reflections away a lot, has some issues, which we'll talk about, but I mean, the brightness is absolutely fantastic. But Let's move on to HDR because the story is, yeah. The HDR just sucks. When compared to the competition, and when I say competition, I am gonna directly talk about the LG 32 GQ 950 in this video specifically. That's basically, well, apples to apples right there. The monitors are incredibly similar, but the HDR on this one is an HDR 600 rating, whereas on the LG, it is an HDR 1000 rating. Now, the differences here, as far as overall 100% window brightness are not massive. When you turn this thing into HDR, the overall 100% window brightness will go all the way up to 630 nits in HDR, which is very good. That's um, that's quite good. It's not just highlights that gets that 600 nits. So it's brighter really than the rating. The issue here is the colors. They become extremely washed out. Um, now, if you are into more of like that style when you're gaming with HDR on, like when I first gamed on this, I was like, is Battlefield, did they change their color profile? Maybe something in the game, but no. Basically what happens when you turn HDR on and you cannot change the color profile in HDR is it makes it really, really, really washed out. And it's just not pretty, it's not enjoyable uh, to game on or really to watch any content on. It's very underwhelming and the SDR experience is far superior to the HDR experience. Now, this is still an IPS panel, as is the GQ950, but the GQ950 is probably the best HDR experience for a IPS panel without mini LED local dimming. And this one is just, well, it's far from the best. There are plenty of other monitors way less expensive than this that have a better HDR experience. All right, but now let's move on to colors. Now, this is great as you would expect, covering 98% of the DCI-P3 color space, 100% of the Adobe RGB color space and 100% of the sRGB color space. Now that's all partially due to the quantum dot layer, which definitely helps things out. But interestingly enough, this monitor really feels more like a gamer slash creative monitor. And what I mean by that is if you're a streamer, a YouTuber, uh, something like that, where you're going to be gaming and then also editing 
on the same machine. That's what this feels like it's geared towards. This almost feels like a subset of Corsair's sub-brand Elgato. So this definitely feels like it's heavily influenced by Elgato uh, and you might have some carryover there, but that's why a lot of times this won't, well, it doesn't just quite compete with the GQ950 enough. Out of the box, accuracy is good, good enough for photo and video editing out of the box, exactly what you would expect from a monitor that's geared towards a you know creative gamer. That's kind of what we're seeing here. Now, these are just my own opinions. I don't know if that's actually the case or not, but that's kind of what it feels like. This can also output 10 or 12 bits of color at full resolution and refresh rate, 144 Hertz. So that's great. Moving on to contrast ratio, and we're gonna talk about local dimming as well. Now, the contrast ratio on this is nothing crazy. It is 1000 to one. That's pretty typical for IPS panels. Now, this does have local dimming, but also like on the LG 32 GQ 950, it is awful. However, on the GQ 950, I believe it had 16 zones on the top and 16 zones on the bottom, so not full array local dimming. This one is even worse and it just has single zone vertical local dimming, which is god awful. And, and both of them are equally unusable. Basically, the only use case scenario you're gonna see here is if, well, you're watching a movie, playing a game, the screen goes black. During that black screen, the screen will get substantially blacker, uh, but that's really the only use case scenario that you're ever gonna be able to actually have the local dimming engaged. So it's terrible. Uh, you, you basically don't ever need it on, but you can leave it on if you want to. All right, but now response time, ghosting, and input lag. This is an interesting section. Now this is 12 milliseconds greater gray response time, which you might be like, oh my God, all these other monitors are advertising one to two millisecond greater gray response times. We all know that's, well, that's just their rating. Corsair is obviously um, doing a way of testing that's kind of more accurate. So 12 milliseconds uh, is definitely more accurate, but how does that even translate into ghosting? Well, it's very, very little. And I can tell you right off the bat, the best setting would be the fastest setting, which is dynamic OD or dynamic overdrive. Even though this is very, very good, very low ghosting, it is not crystal clear. It does not look very similar to an OLED, which basically has no ghosting and the the LG 32 GQ 950 has basically no ghosting. It is crystal clear. This one is not quite there. The actual differences in gameplay are basically unnoticeable as for ghosting. You can't really notice the difference there, but you always know that the GQ 950 is just a little bit better. Input lag is the exact same story here. Both are extremely low, but the GQ 950 is just a little bit less input lag. Now, are you ever gonna feel a difference? Probably not. So I'd say both the response time and the input lag basically are kind of a wash there. They're so good at this point that you don't need to worry about them. But if you do want the absolute best and lowest input lag and ghosting, well, it's the LG GQ 950 that's gonna hit that. Now, before we move into other sections that I typically cover in my reviews, we're going to talk about a big con that might not necessarily fall into one of these categories, which is the matte finish. Now, I did mention that this has a very good matte finish for not getting those reflections on your monitor, and that's absolutely true. You pair the matte finish with the brightness and you're not getting any reflections basically ever. However, this is a bad matte finish. Now, most reviewers will not talk about this, but matte finishes are not created equal. When you have a bad matte finish, um, maybe one that's more matte than not matte, uh, you start to get this oil smeared look on white screens. This one is incredibly noticeable on white screens. Now, for some people, this may not bother you. I've checked the reviews on Amazon. Some of them are five stars. They said it's the best monitor they've ever used. So obviously those people do not see it. I am incredibly particular. And one of the other points is that the LG 32 GQ 950, that one has one of the best finishes in the game, which is a cross hybrid basically between a matte and a glossy finish. If you don't know, glossy finishes are gonna give you the best overall picture quality. Um, but not only that, but the GQ 950 also has the ATW, which increases color and contrast viewing angles. Uh, so if you are creative, that's kind of a must. After using that, it's, it makes a substantial difference. That glossy slash matte finish was super, super good. It really does sound like I'm sponsored, but this channel is dedicated to not being sponsored by anyone. I've never taken a sponsorship and never will. That is a guarantee. So it's just across the board, the GQ 950 is better. It is a little bit more expensive. So we'll get to the price and value section and see if this is still the right monitor for you. I do wanna say, because I am comparing this to the GQ 950 so much, this is still an excellent monitor. I have still 
loved my time using this monitor and it is a fantastic gaming monitor. But my job as a reviewer is to make sure that I am honest about everything. I want to love and recommend this monitor as much as possible, but it just happens that the GQ950 is just better in a lot of sections. Slightly better, not massively better, except for the HDR experience, which is quite a bit better, but that's what that is. Let's move on to the menu system and controls. Firstly, Corsair is very new to the monitor industry and I honestly was expecting the menu system and controls to just be terrible and to suck. And they honestly just don't. This is like very good for just entering the monitor industry. Now the controls are on the right back side. That's not my favorite placement because of dual monitor setups makes it basically impossible for you to get to those controls without swiveling the monitor. However, besides that, it's very good. So it uses a joystick to control the menu system. And then there's one dedicated power button. The dedicated power button is next to that joystick, but it's a long, thin piece and it's very easy to know that's the joystick, that's the power button. Power button is also incredibly responsive. You click it, it's off immediately. You click it, it comes on very, very quickly. So those are really good things. Those are the things that user experience was really good. The menu system itself doesn't have an overload of options. It doesn't have a ton of options. So if you like to go in and tinker and touch every little thing, some things that are don't need to be there, but are on most monitors may not be there on this monitor. But basically everything that you're going to need to change is really fast to get to. It's simple to get to. There's no gimmicky things. There's no going into sub menus and doing this. No, it's really fast. It's incredibly responsive. You go through, you change it, it's done. Uh, so for that, it's really good. Is it as pretty as LG's? Not even close. LG has the best menu system in the game, but compared to Dell, which has been in the game for a long time, Dell and Alienware, I would say this one is maybe better than those. Even though theirs is a little bit prettier, this one is so stupid fast, so stupid simple, it just works. There's a few things that I don't like, like I would like to see a list of the picture profiles rather than a sliding bar. So I don't like the sliding bar stuff, but that's stuff that they're very new. And overall, if you're using this, you're going to get used to that. Not a big deal. The other thing is the picture profiles are very good. You have sRGB, DCI-P3, and Adobe RGB. So if you're doing creative work, that is awesome. The other thing is that if you're just gaming and we're just talking about gaming performance, the standard picture quality that this comes in out of the box is really good. The colors look accurate when you're on the desktop. Nothing looks overly crazy or, or like a little bit too warm or a little bit too white. Like it's very, it looks really good. It looks accurate, but it still manages to just bump that saturation up just a little bit. It has nice deep reds or yellows or whatever those deep colors are. It's very vibrant and pretty. So the standard colorway for gaming, really good. They did a great job tuning the colors. All right, base compatibility is pretty much exactly what you would expect here, being compatible with 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter base amount. But now let's talk ports and some other compatibility things, which are good. All right, this has one DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.1s. As for console gaming, it's great. I mean, no problems here as you would expect. If you wanna do PS5, Xbox Series X, X, whatever, it's fantastic for console gaming as you would freaking expect here. But then it has one USB Type-C for display connection and then one USB Type-C for upstream connection to two USB Type-A downstreams. And then obviously it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now to have those USB Type-Cs is a huge pro. That is something that I did say on the GQ950 was definitely a criticism because that monitor does not have Type-C. For people that are gonna be using these for gaming and creative work, having the ability to plug a MacBook Pro or any sort of laptop, like right here, just uses almost USB-C exclusively. To be able to just go to that, be able to just plug in one cable from your laptop to something like that, that is great for creative work. That's something the GQ950 doesn't have. And the USB ports are great for the compatibility, which I think, again, was influenced by Elgato, because on the top of that stand, you can mount stuff from Elgato. So if you are a streamer, you can literally mount stuff directly on to this monitor and it is designed for that, which is very cool. All right, but talking about the stand so much, let's talk about the stand and build quality, which is probably um, my most like consistently not criticized section of this video. It's freaking unbelievably good. This is the single best stand on any monitor that I've ever reviewed ever, no matter the price point. This is unbelievably good. The designers at Corsair, I'm saying this to you. You are majestic people and this is a gift to humanity. This is stunning. It's not just pretty, but it's stable, it's functional, it's well-made. Okay, so let's go over it. The stand looks crazy on the bottom. It's all metal. 
uh, the stand for the height adjustable section. Yeah, it's all metal. Like on the outside, if you tap on it, it is metal. Probably the most high quality stand that we've ever tested on this channel. I mean, it's incredibly good. Cable management is also the best that we've ever seen on the channel. It's incredibly usable. It's so functional. It's just a stupid, simple design. I don't, I don't know if it's technically simple, but it's not overly complicated, but it just works well. Now for how this actually functions, this has height, tilt, and swivel. And for all of those, it actually does a lot of them like a lot. Like it swivels a lot, it tilts a lot, and it has a quite a bit of height adjustability. I could go on forever about this stand, but the main point is if you have any worries about the stand, don't. This is unbelievably good. All right, price and value. Probably the most important section of this video because of how much I've compared this to the LG. Now this comes in at $999.99, so basically a thousand bucks. And when compared to the LG 32 GQ950, which has a price tag of about 1300 bucks, you might be saying, well, why are you comparing it then. The price point is not the same. Well, when this came out at $1,300, this was $1,000 and basically was $1,000 consistently. Now, currently at the time of making this video, like literally right now, the price tag of the LG 32GQ950 is $1,193.87. Now, I believe they did this because Black Friday is coming up and I think they raised the price so that they can lower the price. Happens a lot of times. I've actually seen LG do this a lot of the time. So most of the time we're actually seeing this around that $1,000 price tag, which is, well, right together. When I received the Corsair monitor uh, a few weeks ago, they were exactly the same price. In fact, the LG was slightly cheaper by a few bucks. Now for the differences, which mainly are the HDR performance, matte finish, Lack of FreeSync Premium Pro. LG having a significantly better menu system that's prettier and has more options. And faster gaming performance across the board. It just doesn't make sense to get this monitor over the LG GQ950 if they're the same price because the GQ950 is just an unbelievably good monitor for the price. That being said, if this monitor is on sale for around $800 to $850, where the LG is not, if it's sitting at $1,000 or $1,100, if they don't decrease the price back to $1,000, this may be a fantastic pickup. And actually for 850 bucks or 800 bucks, which would be insane, but 850, that would be an unbelievably good pickup. So watch for that. So overall, do I recommend this monitor? Well, as far as performance across the board, the LG 32 GQ950 beats this monitor. And I recommend that monitor over this one, unless this one is on sale. Again, there are Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. If you wanna check out both of them, I'll also have the LG 32 GQ950 link below. And my full review of the LG 32 GQ950 will also be right here. Both are fantastic monitors and they're very similar, but you just get more performance out of the GQ950. So keep an eye out for sales and kind of decide if that stand is worth paying a little bit extra over the GQ950 for, well, specs. All right, this is Tasty Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.